All right, in this video, I want to talk about Jesus, your king. Jesus, your king. Now, you say, Jesus isn't my king. I don't have a king. I'm an American, or I'm, well, I guess in most countries today don't have a king at all, not just America. But fact is, everyone does have a king. And that king's name is Jesus Christ. Now, whether you realize that or not makes no difference. Okay? When there were kings in the Middle Ages, if someone was born a peasant and they grew up a peasant son, and they never knew about the king, did that change the fact that they had a king? No, that didn't change the fact that they had a king. They had a king no matter what they thought, what they knew, or how they felt about it. They had a king. And the same applies for you and everyone else on the planet. Same applies for me. I have a king. You have a king. Everyone in the creation has a king. And his name is Jesus Christ. You need to know something about this king. If you have a king, you have a responsibility to the king. You also... Uh, are his property, he owns you. The Bible says that Jesus is the creator of all things and that all things were created for his pleasure. Okay? So you were created for your king's pleasure. So it's important for you to know about this king, but the most important thing is for you to know this king. But the theme of this video is, like I said, Jesus Christ, your king. So that's what we want to examine. Now, in 2 Samuel 19.10, I've got my notes here for this video. 2 Samuel 19.10, we see a picture of the second coming of Christ. King David's there. He's a picture of Christ in the Old Testament. And you've got his son, Absalom, who is a picture of Antichrist in the Old Testament. And he gets power for a little while, just like the Antichrist will get power for a little while. And he's ruling and reigning, but eventually the real king's going to come back. And when the real king comes back, the Antichrist is done away with. Absalom was done away with. They filled him full of arrows in the tree. So he's done away with, and the real king comes back. And there's a question asked in 2 Samuel 19.10, it says, Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? People don't want to talk about Jesus coming back. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to talk about it. But it's not going to stop this event from happening. It's not going to stop it from taking place. He is going to come back. Like it or not, your king is coming back. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to meet your king, your God, your ruler? Now, when he came the first time, when Jesus came at first, he was a lamb. Okay, He came as a lamb. When he showed up on the scene with John the Baptist, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That was the first mission. He came, he died on the cross and shed his blood like a lamb. It was a sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. That's what Jesus came to do the first time. The next time he comes, he's not going to be a lamb again. He's not going to bring in peace. He's going to come as a king to set up his own kingdom. Okay? Uh, there's a prophecy in Isaiah, chapter 31, verse 4. It says, Like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not... Be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord, Jesus of hosts, come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. He's the lion coming down. And the shepherds are the rulers of this world. They don't want him to come back. But he's not going to abase himself. He's not going to be afraid of the rulers of this world. He's God. He created them. He's going to come down here and take over and establish his kingdom. Okay, now how do we know, how do we know that Jesus is a king right now? How do we know? Well, there was a martyr in the book of Acts by the name Stephen, okay? And Stephen, he gets martyred, and the Bible records what he sees when he gets martyred, okay? In uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 56, it says, And 
he and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And that's what he saw right before he died. He saw King Jesus at the right hand of God on his throne. Hebrews 10, 12 will confirm this. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Also, remember that Jesus is the Lamb of God. Revelation 22, 1 tells us, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. So, the Lamb of God is up there on the throne. And the Lamb of God, according to John the Baptist, that's Jesus Christ. The Lamb is the Lion. The Lamb is the King. He has a throne. A king has a throne. Jesus is on his throne and ruling now over all of creation from heaven. But he's going to come back to the earth, and he's going to set up his kingdom one of these days. And if you know about prophecy, you know that it could be very soon. Very soon this is going to happen. You say, oh, they've been saying that for a while. Yes, but we have more understanding now in regards to the things that will happen. Okay? They're going to control all the buying and selling, and I mean, they have the technology to do this. this. The whole world will see him when he comes back. How? Well, you've got satellites now. There's just all this technology that is going to make it possible for what the Bible said for years that people couldn't wrap their mind around. They just took it on faith. It was true because it was in the Bible. Now we can see how it can happen. It doesn't take that much faith to believe that the things the Bible says are going to happen in the last days will actually happen. So that lends support to the idea that Jesus is indeed coming back soon. He's going to be coming back soon. So this begs the question, what's he going to do once he comes back? What is King Jesus going to do once he comes back? Alright, when he comes back, he's going to set up his own kingdom. But when he comes down, he's going to come riding down, and he's going to trod people to death. He, he's going to tread the wine press, except it's not grapes, it's people. And when he does this, he gets blood all over his clothes. Isaiah 63 describes it. talks about that uh, when he comes back, they're going to say, Have you been treading the wine press? And he says, I've tread the wine press alone, but he's not really talking about grapes. He's talking about a wine press of people. And that's what he will tread when he comes back. You either let the blood of Christ cover you, or your blood will cover Christ when he comes back. If you reject him and manage to live through the tribulation, your blood will cover Christ when he comes back. He's going to try a lot of people to death. The blood will be up to horses' bridles for 70 miles. That's what the Bible teaches. So it's going to be a bloody day when he comes back. He's also going to ride across a Muslim graveyard and, and violate their religious beliefs, but he doesn't care. A lion doesn't take into consideration the rights and feelings and you know what's politically correct concerning the prey. He doesn't worry about that. He just comes charging in and does what he wants to do. That's what Jesus is going to do. Those are his plans when he comes back the second time as the lion, okay? Those are the plans. That's why I ask, are you ready for that? Are you ready for King Jesus to come and clean house around here? Uh, there's a lot of false kingdoms set up with false rulers. He's going to put an end to that. Like I just said, Islam is one of these establishments that Jesus is not going to tolerate. They rob Jesus Christ of his deity. They even, uh, in order to show that the Christians were wrong, they cemented up the entrance, the eastern gate, that prophecy says he's going to ride through. They cemented it shut to try and show that, oh, see, he can't ride through there now. We just filled it up with cement, what he's supposed to be going through. Well, <laughs> the problem with that is they forgot, or they, they refused to acknowledge the fact that Jesus Christ is God. Some cement isn't going to stop him from doing what he promised to do years ago. And the Muslims are going to find that out the hard way. When he abolishes their religion and violates everything they do and just rides right on through that eastern gate, they're going to know that they're dealing with something far greater than they ever realized. And they're going to realize that Christianity was true all along. Also, 
the Roman Catholic Church that promotes a false gospel and claims that the Pope is Jesus Christ on earth, they're going to realize real quick the Pope is not Jesus Christ on earth because Jesus Christ is not going to stand for Roman Catholicism when he comes back. He's going to abolish it, uproot it, pluck it up, and do away with it. It's not going to deceive people any longer. Jesus will be king. The Pope will be nothing. Okay, in fact, if you believe he's the fulfillment of either Antichrist or a false prophet, he's going to be cast in the lake of fire. He's not going to be around to enjoy the millennial reign of Christ. And every atheist, every atheist on the planet is going to become a believer. Every atheist will be a believer when they have Jesus Christ physically here on the earth ruling and reigning over them. They didn't believe in God. Now he's here physically telling them what to do. Those are the ones that survive. Most of them are going to be trampled out and they're going to die. A lot of them will die in the Great Tribulation, but they still won't come to God. They'll gnash their teeth cursing God, the God they don't believe in. Then he'll come back and rule and reign over the few that will survive into the Millennial Kingdom. This is very serious business. So what can you do to be ready? You say, I don't want to get trampled to death. I don't want to face um, all this that you're talking about that King Jesus is going to do. How do I get on his side? He's not angry at everybody, is he? No, he's not. In order to be on his side, you have to accept what he did when he came as a lamb the first time. He came as a lamb and paid your sins because he loves you. Don't get me wrong. We talk about Jesus doing all these things, and you feel like, boy, I thought Jesus Christ... Uh, was love, Christianity was all about love, and God is love, and those verses are in the Bible, and yes, God is love. That's why he sent his son to die for you on a cross. You have to accept that payment. You have to accept the Bible's teaching about sin, and agree with God about that sin, okay? We use the word repentance, and that's become a dangerous word. People uh, don't understand it, and they go uh, haywire when you try and talk about repentance, but... Um, the fact is, you have to agree with God about the sin when you come to Him. And so you agree with God that you're a sinner and you deserve hell for your sins. And then you trust Jesus Christ to save you from those sins. His finished work on the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That is the gospel. You trust that gospel and you're saved. Then the Bible says, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Christ is going to have a millennial reign, a 1,000 year reign on this earth. You know, it's interesting, everything Satan distracts people away from God with is something that they actually could have and enjoy if they came to God. Satan's just a counterfeiter. You know, if you want power, you'll have it during the millennial reign. You will rule and reign with Christ. You'll have power. You want riches? You're going to have a mansion in the new Jerusalem. Okay? That's where your home will be if you're a Christian. And if you come to Christ, receive the gospel, you get that. You get riches, you get power, and I'm not trying to, it's not a prosperity thing. You won't get it in this lifetime, but you'll get it eventually when he comes back to rule and reign. You'll rule and reign with him, and then after that, you live in eternity. I mean, it's, it, you can't say no. It's the best deal of your lifetime. All you have to do is accept the payment that he already made. So many people don't want to do that because of pride or what will my friends think or something. They're, they're holding on to something in this life that's just not worth holding on to. It's not worth holding on to, not worth rejecting Christ over, but they'll reject Christ and they'll go to hell or they'll go to the tribulation and see the worst period ever in world history and if they're fortunate enough to survive that, they might get stomped to death and if not, they'll survive only to see the God they hated set up a kingdom and the followers of that God that they never got along with and couldn't stand People who are watching this maybe right now and are upset with me for telling them all these truths, they're going to see people like me put in a position of power over them. All they had to do was drop the pride, drop the cares of this world, and do business with God. Okay, so I hope this little chalk talk's been 
a blessing to you. I hope you realize that uh, you've got a king that's coming back. It's all shaping up. Um, it's going to get real bad beforehand. But you don't have to be here for that. You can be saved and be raptured and then come back after the seven-year tribulation and rule and reign with him. It's a deal of a lifetime, but like I said, that pride is, destruct is destructive. And people will hold on to anything and try to get to heaven their own way, or they'll just deny God all the way because they don't want to deal with the conviction. And they don't want to be humble enough to admit that they need God and they need Jesus Christ. But I hope you'll consider the things we've talked about, and you'll consider coming to know Jesus Christ as your Savior so that you can reign with him as your king. Thank you for watching. God bless.